Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian from Kenny Martini Cross Nation. And today's video, we're gonna it's gonna be a pretty much a really long video covering all of the new updates that have been uh, available in the JP version of the game. We're gonna be covering all of the new uh, seven star metal updates as well as all of the new um, information that you need to know about PvP. Uh, that I've been able to find out so far. Now, another YouTuber by the name of Lost Predictions, if you uh, if you happen to know of him, I was able to get some of his help in his last stream, uh, where he actually got to play the new PvP mode in the JP version of the game, and he was kind enough to let me use uh, parts of his stream and help me out in finding out some of the uh, pieces of information that I actually wanted to uh, know about. A big shout out to him, big thank you to him, I really appreciate it. Uh, but essentially how I'm expecting to go about this video is essentially I'm going to go over each of the update panels that they presented in the JP version of the game uh, using the Google Translate that's within Chrome. Uh, so it'll be a little bit of a rough translation. And then from there, I'll present some of the more finer aspects of the uh, mode that is not told within the panels, um, but I was able to find out within Lost Prediction Stream itself. So without further ado, let's get started. There's a lot to go over. So looking at my screen right now, uh, it has shown right here that versus player pre-opened. Let's challenge the enemy for the top ranking. Versus player, which can battle other players in Coliseum, has pre-opened. As a ranking fee, you can earn a new appearance draw ticket. If you draw with this ticket, you can get the evolution material Blue Fairy for 7-star medals. So let's challenge by all means. Essentially what this means right here is that the new PvP... Uh, mode is going to be a mode that's within the Coliseum version of uh, mode within the game um, and all they're doing is they're get adding a uh, PvP button within Coliseum that you can press and actually do the PvP version of uh, within the mode um, and what they're saying right here too is that the whole new appearance draw ticket is uh, they're basically giving out these certain uh, tickets that you can use to pull blue fairy medals evolution material medals to help evolve your six star medals into seven star medals and i'll get to more of that in a second but essentially uh just by playing pvp you will be able to get uh these certain types of tickets now another thing that i mentioned in this panel is that they say the number of times you can challenge per day in pvp has been already decided and if you purchase bonus jewels the number of times you can challenge increases even more okay so essentially what they're talking about right here is that for free to play players you can only play up to three times a day but for vip players and i don't know if this also uh, extends to people who purchase from the uh the actual jewel shop itself but at the very least for vip players vip players can play up to five times a day i know at least within my discord this got a little bit of heat uh for that but uh that's how it is and that's what i'm letting you know how it goes because uh, i was very curious about that as well i'm a little disappointed by the fact that it's so low uh like and the fact that there's actually being a line drawn between free to play and non-free to play at this point too i i'm not like, I'm not sure how I feel about that. I feel like it's like a little bit unfair, but at the same time, it does make sense. So I would love to hear what you guys have to say about it. But in addition, uh, they also said, we also hold a limited time mission for the Keyblade used this time. If you clear each mission, each 300 jewels, totally 900 jewels can be earned. So please challenge by all means. I think this is really cool, really nice. Essentially what that's saying right there, uh, from what I was able to gather, they will be adding into like, kind of like with the daily missions, uh, certain missions that are associated with the PvP Keyblades in which you can get a total of 900 jewels. Now, I don't know if these are exactly replacing some of the daily missions or if it's just like a, a time thing, kind of like a, a like a weekly or a monthly uh, type of quest or something. So I don't know how long these actual quests will last, but at the very least, it's nice to know it's, a, it's another way to get free jewels. Now, the next thing to talk about is the fact that they did go into uh, more, a little bit more specifics about the sub slots itself. Uh, if you remember last time in my last like few uh, PvP and 7 star metal update videos, essentially what they ended up showing us was uh, how exactly do the multiple multiplier like amplification happen when you use the 7 star metals in the sub slots of your Keyblades. Um, but this time, what they're actually showing us for clarification is that each subslot actually ha requires a certain type of metal attribute. So in this case, it does show that for this slot 2 right here, 
you do have to use a speed type metal in which case they are showing an hd shora over here as like a type of metal you can put with it and over here on the th slot three you have to use a power reverse metal and they use a hd axle as an example over here as a metal you can put for slot three so i thought that was very worth noting because that definitely makes it a little bit more difficult to just well buff out your keyblade uh ridiculously now uh, but it is something good to know so the next piece of information that is new to us is actually in regards to how PvP works in itself. Um, and they state right here that if you win against your opponent, you can switch to the opponent's rank. And the example they give is that if you are the 1,000th ranked person and you fight against the 500th place person and you beat them, you actually then become the 500th place person and the opponent becomes the 1,000th place person. Now, this is something I kind of already expected. Uh... But it's at least nice to know for clarification purposes. Uh, they also mentioned that the battle has a time limit of 5 minutes. And if you exceed the time limit, it will be treated as a draw. Uh, I, I'm i a little perplexed by this because I'm here trying to figure out like, well, what exactly, what type of battle would have to ensue to make a PvP battle last longer than 5 minutes in the first place? Uh, but maybe, I don't know, <laughs> maybe, maybe they got something in store for us, which would make something like that happen. Who knows? But another piece of information that they do include the opponent and his or her attribute are considered as no attribute and there are no weak point attributes. The state abnormal system skill becomes the effect exclusively for versus player. The usual battle and effect turn number are different. The opponent will be treated as ground type enemies. So essentially what they're saying right here is that normally within the game and other aspects of the game. Uh, enemies that you fight against do have an attribute uh, that you can take advantage of um, using the super effective system. So you know how like power is super, super effective against speed, which is super effective against magic, which is also super effective against uh, power. Okay, it's a triangle. Um, that doesn't apply in PvP because of the fact you have no attribute. You are literally neutral. Okay, kind of like how the pet slot has no attribute, you also have no attribute. So basically, you're not able to do any super effective type damage when using your metals. Uh, the only exception to this are metals that actually say that they ignore attributes such as uh, HD King Mickey EX, for example, um, because he says that in his ability. He would be one of the only few metals that can actually do super effective damage because that's what his ability actually does and says. And of course, the other piece of information that they mentioned was the fact that uh, they confirmed that, yes, you are considered a ground type enemy. So the minus 60 ground type trait does uh, come into effect and become a little bit more valuable um, in terms of PvP. Now, I've heard people have gripes about this. Uh, it does make the minus 60 air trait uh, less valuable and not as exciting to have. Um, and I'm, I'm just hoping, personally, I'm just hoping that because of the fact this is just a brand new mode that just came out, it's simply just the beginning stages of the game. I would very much appreciate if maybe later on, um, with all these balloon <laughs> type avatar perks they're giving us, maybe they can make a, make it, maybe they can make a balloon perk or something that can give us the, uh, the ability to actually float within PvP. So we're actually considered an air type. Uh, enemy at that point too. Uh, something like that just add variety within the PvP mode would be nice to have so that way it's, it's not just a mindless uh, damage contest because I can already tell you right now uh, if that's the way it's going to end up going it's going to be just as annoying and time consuming um, and just not very interesting to play in um, just like Colosseum is right now and I would hate to see a multiplayer mode like PvP be ruined for some by because of something dumb like that um, so if they can add some type of variety within the mode itself that would be truly appreciated uh, now another thing they mentioned within the panel update is that you can earn points by battle and earn rewards by accumulating it you can earn points even in draws and defeats but you can earn more points by winning points are reset when the ranking period ends so basically what they're saying right there is that no matter what you will receive points just simply by playing pvp however of course uh, you will receive more points by winning than you would by uh, getting a draw or a defeat, okay? And from what I can understand from the points that going on in, from watching the stream and stuff, it's kind of similar to like a high score challenge. The person with the most points gets to the highest rank. And at the end of the month, because PvP does last a month just like Coliseum, at the end of the month, you are rewarded gold and silver tickets depending if you can rank high enough 
um, and bronze tickets as well. And you use those tickets in order to get some of the uh, blue fairy evolution material medals in order to evolve into six star medals. Going on to the next panel is actually talking about the blue fairy medals to talk about that a little bit more. Okay, so essentially, uh, I'll read it. It is five draws which can be used by consuming gold tickets, silver tickets, and bronze tickets. And there are eight types of uh, blue fairy medals going from tier one to tier eight. Okay, so essentially, going on from what I was just saying before, you are, from playing PvP, you're awarded these certain tickets, okay? Gold, silver, and bronze tickets that you can use to redeem to pull from these certain uh, blue fairy banners that will be available within PvP. And each ticket can only give you access to, to a certain range of actual blue fairy type medals, okay, tiers. So bronze tickets can give you anywhere from a tier 1 to 3 blue fairy medal. Uh, silver tickets can give you anywhere from a tier 3 to a tier 8 blue fairy medal. And gold tickets can give you anywhere from a tier 5 to a tier 8 blue fairy medal, okay. Now, there was a bit of a mixed reaction, at least within my Discord, uh, in terms of this, because of the fact that, because of the fact that they're, they're giving us an RNG aspect for just an evolution material, uh, for, especially for, like, tickets and such that we can only get at the end of the month, at least as of right now, at the end of the month, um, there was a bunch of mixed reaction about this. Some it, it just turned off a lot more people after hearing that. Some people were okay with it because of the fact that it does mean that uh like just the whales or the top tier people can't just like get ahead all of a sudden um right away anything either. It it does mix things up and it allows people a little bit more of a fair a fair chance and such. So there's a bit of a mixed reaction about that. So I'd like to hear what you guys have to say about it. But other than that, uh, let's go into the last panel that they had, which is talking about the actual 7-star medal. So I'm going to go ahead and read it. It says, The upper limit of metal rarity was released, and the metal became able to evolve to 7 stars. By evolving into 7 stars, the maximum attack power, so the strength stat, exceeds 10,000, and the ability magnification greatly increases, so the, the, the metal's multiplier, um, and it becomes super strong. Some 7-star medals... Limited medals and high skill medals will be added the light or darkness three step up and basically to help uh, translate that real quick into global terms. Uh, it's saying that some seven star medals such as high score challenge and uh, exclusive or limited time type medals will be given an upgraded ability where uh, when they go to a seven star they will be provided a plus three upright or reverse strength buff. Uh, depending on the attribute of the metal, okay? And my only question towards this, in regards to this, is whether or not what is considered like an exclusive or limited type metal. I hope that means uh, VIP metals would count towards that. Uh, that would help out a lot. I'm also curious as to whether or not like that includes EX metals. Any type of like exclusive banner such as EX medals, which is realistically all we ever get these days now. Uh, does Is that included into that too? Um, can like if I evolve my uh, original Sephiroth EX metal, uh, the tier six one, if I evolve that into a seven star metal, would that get a reverse buff? Uh, that's that like it, it it's clarification on that that I would like to know. Um, and they went ahead and gave a simple example as to the type of uh, increases that could be seen within the seven star medals between the six star medals. So right here they show a six star HD uh, soar, which I believe is a tier four medal. Uh, it shows its normal ability, uh, its normal strength stat of around 7300, uh, and its normal multiplier, total max multiplier, uh, which is a 3.47 to a 7.08. And after it goes 7 star, it uh, actually receives a plus 3 upright strength buff, um, and it goes from a strength of 7300 to 12,000, which is absolutely insane. That's a 5,000 strength uh, increase. Um, and for the, anybody who's curious, well, like strength doesn't really matter. It does matter because the strength stat is what determines in the first place how much damage a metal actually does. Everything else is just multipliers that get added onto the strength stat itself. So a, a huge buff to the strength stat can already in itself cause a lot more, a significant increase in damage to uh, a metal by itself. Um, and going on about that, uh, showing the difference in the multiplier. So the original multiplier was 3.47 to 7.08. At 7 stars, HD Sora goes to 
uh, 7.51 to 11.13. This is absolutely ridiculously huge because of the fact that like this is like a tier 4 metal and when it goes to 7 star it essentially has a multiplier similar to that of a tier 6 or 7 metal that's at 6 stars that we would see right now. So a huge jump like that is absolutely ridiculous and really cool um because that now th like right now that means that even old metals tier one and two metals uh can even see some relevance now too which is fairly exciting to see and now right here below they just go on to mention that uh they just mentioned some of the conditions you need to meet to make sure you can evolve six star medals and seven star medals which is essentially you do need to meet the max guilt percentage of the metals tier level in order to evolve it into a seven star medal so like uh, a tier 3 metal, for example, the max multiplier for a tier 3 metal is 100%. You do, you do need to be at 100% in order to evolve it into six, uh, 7 star. Um, as well as the fact you do need 7 of the same type of tier of blue fairy metal in order to evolve into that 7 star as well. So like take for, taking, for example, uh, this picture right here of the... This is a tier 1 blue fairy metal. In order to evolve a tier 1 metal into a... Uh, seven star metal um, you do need five okay of these tier one blue fairy metals uh, before you can evolve your tier one metal into a seven star metal all right so now after going over all of like the the panel updates and stuff i want to go over some of the uh, information i actually got to find out after watching lost prediction stream um, that he was able to help me with. Um, I'll start off with some of the m miscellaneous type of inf information then I'll go into the actual more important stuff, okay? Uh, so first of all, now in regards to fighting, you can fight people of different unions. Uh, the way it works as of right now from what I could tell, uh, when you go into PvP, you are given three options of three different players that you can choose to fight against. Uh, I believe it's the first one is someone of higher rank than you. The second, the one in the middle, is someone who's of around the same rank as you. And then the third option is someone of lower rank than you. Um, and as far as Lost Predictions and I could tell from watching the stream and him doing it, uh, there is currently no option at all whatsoever to actually fight specific people. Uh, which to me is a bit of a turnoff because that's pretty much what I was most looking forward to. <laughs> like I wanted to do a live stream uh, this Friday and actually fight against you guys, my viewers and stuff. I wanted to actually like uh, just, you know, have fun and fight anybody I wanted. Uh, I was I also wasn't expecting an actual limitation of how many times I can fight per day too. I'm also a little bit miffed about that. But I also found out that pet skills do work in PvP. I do need uh, to do a little bit of testing on my part just to see how exactly do the pet skills um, for certain situations, specifically like the Asuna ability, for example, when does the Asuna ability actually trigger? Um, this is important to know because for anybody that's looking to try and use any sort of uh, status ailment uh, strategy such as myself, um, knowing when the Asuna ability actually triggers can be very important. Uh, and I mention this because of the fact that uh, it wasn't actually able to be shown in Lost Prediction stream, so I would have to actually test it myself. But for me, at the very least, I need to know whether or not does the Asuna ability actually trigger at the end of the round, or does it actually trigger at the beginning of the player's turn? Uh, because knowing the difference between the two uh, can vastly determine how effective any type of status ailment or even turtle strategies could be on if you're on the defender's uh side of the battle and such okay um, which actually leads me to my next point being that uh it is an attacker based system where basically what that means is that whoever issues the challenge has the initiative to go first every single time okay so every time you go into pvp and you go to challenge somebody you will automatically go first all right um and that has its pros and cons but it definitely ends up uh providing some uh, complications for anybody who's actually trying to use a little bit more strategy compared to just doing a straight up raw damage contest. I, I really don't want this to be a, a, just a raw damage contest because then that just makes it not that fun anymore um, or as fun as I would like it to be basically. Um, so that's that's something worth noting at the very least. Uh, another thing I do want to point out as well is that uh, and these ones are just a little bit minor stuff. Evolving a metal into a seven star metal does not affect its pet points. Uh, so whatever pet points that metal has right now is what 
pet points it will it will have when it goes to a seven star. It does not change pet points at all whatsoever. As well as the fact you can use your Nova within PvP too. So if you have any sort of Nova level that's above 1000, for example, by chance, such as myself, uh, you can take advantage of that and use that in PvP. Um, now, the last thing I want to mention, and this one's actually really huge and very important to know, is how exactly do buffs and debuffs work within PvP? Now, after analyzing uh, Lost Prediction stream, I was able to determine that any sort of one-turn buffs or debuffs only last for your turn as soon as your turn ends and it goes to your opponent's turn any buffs or debuffs that you inflicted on yourself or your opponent automatically disappear and go away now this is very important to know because of the fact that uh it was uh questionable as to how do effects such as uh hd zexian or vexen plus uh, how would they affect the opponent if they have those buffs from those one turn buffs? Um, so knowing that they disappear as soon as it changes turns between players is very useful to know uh, because that means that you will be able to take full advantage of giving your opponent a max like minus three or minus seven strength debuff from metals like Vexen Plus or HD Zexion. Um, but at the same time, that also means that metals like Chicken Little, for example, who only last one turn, as soon as your turn ends, any type of effects from Chicken Little will automatically disappear, which is pretty unfortunate. So at the very least, that distinction is very important to know. That that was a lot of information, guys. Uh, I have a lot of my own thoughts and feelings about, the, about how it's kind of turning out. Um, it's not really turning out the way I was hoping it would be, um, which kind of sucks. Uh, but I might talk about that in a later video or or just in my later streams and such. Um, but if you enjoyed the episode, please leave a like and subscribe and hit that bell button. It is the best way to know when I upload a new video such as this one. But other than that, my name is Brian from Kingdom Martini Cross Nation and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.